All right, about a week ago, we went to Istanbul, Turkey. Now we're headed to Thessaloniki, Greece, to play POW. Super excited. I've never played in Greece. I heard their fans are great. We just got done with our recovery practice this morning. Flight leaves at two. We are headed to Munich first, and then to Thessaloniki. I can't say that. I don't know, but super excited. Come with me on another road trip, and this time to Greece. All right, so the bus was 30 minutes late, picking us up from Benfica. So we we're cutting it kind of close. We're at the gate now, it's about 1.45. Flight leaves in 15 minutes, so about to hop on this flight. But yeah, super excited. We go to Munich first, then Thessin and Leaky. I looked up some things to do in Greece or to experience Greek culture. And one of the things is they have this like famous or like this specialty coffee called Elenikos. Cafes. And you know, if you know me, I'm a big coffee guy, so I'm super excited to try it. It's a different brewing method. They use like copper, I guess a copper pot to pour the, I think it's water over it. Anyways, if you are Greek and you're following my channel, I, I want to know more about this, but I'm going to go try and experience it and try it. See what it's talking about. I'm going to let you guys know. I'm about to catch this flight and I'll see you guys in Munich. Thank you. How long do you think it takes for all of these idiots to order? <laughs> okay, so we just landed in Munich. I remember this airport from last year when we played Bayern Munich. It's a very nice airport. I forgot how. <laughs> oh no, I can't do it in front of people. Man. All right, so we just landed in Munich, got some food, and now I'm looking for a little store where maybe I can get some snacks for this last leg of the trip. I didn't realize this was such a like a mega long trip it's like seven hours so gotta get a little extra snack still looking for it can't seem to find it but i remember this munich airport for when i played Bayern munich last year super nice airport we got one more leg and i'll see you guys in greece my crib what do we have here no bidet already gets a bad rating from me all right so we got in super late last night but i didn't expect myself to be this jet lagged so we just woke up for breakfast but i'm going right back to bed and then after for lunch i'm i think i'm gonna go try and find some greek coffee i guess greek and turkish coffee are relatively the same like that's what i looked up last night but i want to expand my coffee palette and so that's kind of my goal for today and then we have practice later it should be really cool to see their arena it's really historical but yeah i i'm going to try and maybe walk by the water too today see what, see what that's talking about but again just to preface if i mispronounce any greek words or anything like that just forgive me get mad at me I'm doing my best so i'm gonna I'm gonna sleep for another couple hours because I need to make sure I'm rested for tomorrow. So, I'll see ya. You know the drill. After a long trip, you got to get in your mobility and core. So that's what I'm about to do right now. Then we have film and lunch. I'm going to get some great coffee.
not quite the same view that, I, that we had in Turkey. Not quite the same view. You can see the water a little bit. Okay, so this is what I want to try. Some things say it's Turkish coffee, but this looks like, this says Greek coffee. So I'm gonna go find some of that. All right, so I got the Greek coffee. Um, I'm gonna go walk to the water and try it. This is absolutely incredible. So I think this is the Aegean Sea, and that's a pirate ship, I believe. So this is the Gulf of Thessaloniki. I'm right on the coast, straight looking into the water. Okay, so I have my Greek coffee right here. This feels like one of those surreal moments where I don't really, like I never could have imagined my life like this. And now I'm here and it just doesn't feel real. We just saw a pirate ship go by. I guess that's life when you play overseas, you get a lot of new experiences that you've never had before, never could have even imagined. So this is cool, this is very cool. I've never been to like a port like this. It's incredible. Let me try this this Greek coffee. It's also Turkish coffee. I think it's si very similar, if not the same. I was too nervous to film how they were actually brewing the coffee, but it was really cool. They had like a copper pot that they were, I guess, heating up. I don't know, it was cool though. Coffee's a, not super warm now, but we're gonna try it, then we'll rate it. That was the first sip, second sip. So it's definitely very strong coffee notes. Like it's, this almost tastes like super espresso, but I surprisingly like it. I'm a sucker for like real rich coffee flavor. I used to not be like this, but now I am. It's a weird texture though. Like you can tell like the, the beans, the ground or the grounds are still like kind of in the coffee. So I get kind of like a, it's almost tastes like pulp in orange juice. Don't love that, but the flavor I do really enjoy. So let me get my third sip and then I'll rate it. All right, on a scale of one, I'll never drink it again, 10, I'll get it every time I can. I'd give it a six. I think the coffee flavor I really enjoy, but I can also get that in an espresso shot. I'm just not loving the texture of it. Now let's go walk around the city a little bit more before I have to get back for film. Wait, wait, wait. What'd you say? Yeah. Good luck. All right, I'll see you, my man. <laughs> the guy, I just, I just showed you, he was trying to get me to support his music. They have a concert coming up, gave me a bracelet then proceeded to get me for 20 bucks. So, real businessman out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm supporting the culture, baby. Uh, it sucks that I don't have a lot of time to actually explore this city. I can tell this place is like bustling with culture and stuff to do. You got the water right here. I bet this is amazing in the summer. This is a cool place. This is a very, very cool place. My first impressions of Greece are very, very good. Yeah, let's keep walking around a little bit and then I'll get the taxi home. It's a bummer that I only get to be in this city for, you know, a day and a half, and I gotta prioritize the game, it's the most important thing. So I don't really get to fully experience the culture, but it was a good little taste, I think. Getting to see the waterfront and trying the Greek coffee was enough for me to get a very small glimpse into a little bit of Greek culture. So I gotta get back to the hotel, cold out, so I gotta get warm and then got the rest of the day. Stoyakovich. All the Pauk legends. First look at the arena. Let's see what it's talking about. Oh, the history. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> oh, that's broke. That's broke. Hey guys, I'm Trey, and this is my blog. I just want you guys to see half court shot. I have to shoot 20 times, and I'm gonna edit it until I make it. And now I shoot with yeah. one ball, I air ball again. Okay, so I have to go grab the other ball. Now I'm gonna go, now I'm gonna air ball another one. Okay, I'm gonna shoot the whole. Last one, I'm lying. If I miss another one, I'm gonna grab another one and say it's for TC again, because I'm gonna edit this. Brick. Oh! Right there, baby. All right, first time playing in Greece. You can see and feel the history in this gym. This is gonna be a fun place to play. You can tell it's very historical. I've heard the fans are some of the best in Europe. Excited, it's gonna be fun. And shoot, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I'll see these 8,000 tomorrow, huh, Tiago? Yeah. <laughs> you get nervous? You get nervous by the camera? <laughs> you get so nervous. It's okay. That's history right there. Only time I've seen something like this was in Partizan. It's cool, all the different fan groups. Honestly, this gym is huge. If it seats 8,000, it feels like there's ghosts in here, but it's pretty cool. You can see when the club was founded in 1926 and the PAOK. -okay. One of the coolest gyms I think I've played in. I think it seats 8,000. It honestly doesn't look like much from the outside. But you get in there, it's, it's, it's huge. Pause. Just got done with shoot around. My body's not feeling great. Knees are kind of sore, but I think it's just because of the travel and the gym there, man. <laughs> It's a huge gym, but they don't start heating the gym and it's cold here in Greece. It's not like Portugal, it's cold. It was, I wanna say it was like negative one Celsius. It's cold so my, my knees wouldn't warm up. So I'm a little, not stressed, but a little annoyed that my body doesn't feel great right now. But that's kind of part of it over here is you gotta manage all that. Here's more or less the breakdown of the matchup tonight. We are one and two in Champions League. Pauk is two and one but we beat them when they came to our place. They're our only win of Champions League. We beat them by, I wanna say about 22. Honestly, this is kind of a must win for us. I would say kind of different styles of play. They run a lot of set plays, a lot of longer actions where, you know, they're gonna set a stagger screen and then into a handoff into a pick and roll where we play very fast, quick hitting actions and we wanna get up and down. So again, it's kind of the tale of two different styles. The real key tonight is they have a crazy home court advantage. Their fans are really, really good. We'll see how much that affects the game because they're some of the most well-known fans in Europe. So it should be good. It should be a really fun environment tonight. Looking forward to it. I think our guys are ready. The travel took it out of some of us, but I think we've had about two days to rest and recover. So this should be a really good game. I'll see y'all. Happy birthday, And I swear that a pregame nap be hitting different. Like I go in a little bit tired. I feel like I get hit by a bus every time. Like I needed it really bad. Today, I mean, we're about two and a half hours of game time and a little more, three hours. Today we are wearing the reds. I think these are our best jerseys. Beautiful, Benfica red, Champions League. So we got the little Champions League pet, big number nine, baby. We're about 35 minutes out traffic from, from the stadium, but there's gonna be traffic. Game's at 7.30, so we gotta leave extra early. Ooh, can't forget my shoes. That would be very bad. Today we are wearing the LeBron 20 Grinch. This is my go-to. I almost wore the Mellow Ball Reds, the Mellow Ball 2 Low Reds, but they weren't really sticking on the court well. These have great grip. They're my go-to, I've been playing well on them, so LeBron 20 Grinches today. But yeah, like I said, we gotta we gotta leave here soon. I'm gonna go get my coffee and do my pregame journal, and then we we'll out of here. So I'll see you at game time. You know, like usual, it's game time, baby. Let's get it.
on the road against a tough opponent in a vicious environment. I think we should have won this game, but we dropped it, so let's learn from it. Let's break down some of these plays. All right, really my first touch of the game, we get an offensive rebound and I have the mismatch up top. Take a look at all the open space to my right hand. Instead of attacking, I settle for a three. Not necessarily a horrible shot, but it's early in the game. Establish your rhythm by getting to the rim. We get another offensive rebound. I make a great decision here. Just don't quite convert it, but that's all right. All right, now here's my first pick and roll. I get to a nice little midi here, just don't convert. But I think I could have made this a lot easier by looking to explore the reject right here. If I make my defender respect the drive baseline, it'll create more space on this pick and roll. Again, it's the little details that separate. Here's where the game got a little chippy. Andrew Harrison drives right, I get physical, get, maybe give him a little extra bump after the whistle. He didn't like that and threw the ball at me. Next part is kind of weird. The coach started yelling at me. I liked that he was defending his player, but it didn't really make sense to me. I was playing hard and physical and he just didn't like that. This ended up being a huge play because not only I got a foul, but we both caught a technical as well. So it was both of our second fouls in the first quarter. Sometimes I do talk shit, but right here I honestly wasn't talking that crazy. This next part was a theme of the game for me and a serious problem on defense. When guarding a shooter off ball, you cannot get detached from his body. You have to be physical early and do your work early so they don't get open looks. I didn't do that here and he almost made us pay. Now in this play, Pauk has a defensive miscommunication. They're doubling from the baseline when they shouldn't. TC makes a nice pass, I knock it down. At the highest level, you have to hit open shots. You've heard people call the NBA a make or miss league, but really basketball is a make or miss game. You gotta hit shots. I can't stress this enough. If you're a young hooper, make sure you're getting your reps up every day. Here's another key when guarding off ball screens. You have to get skinny and avoid contact. Right here, I don't get skinny enough. Allows my defender to curl and he hits a tough shot. Get skinny to not die on screens. Here I have the five man on me after an offensive rebound. It's a perfect time to attack the mismatch. I drive right hard, a fake little step back into an up and under. Tough, tough lay. What's cool is I actually worked on these up and unders this summer with my guy Dante, so it was cool to see it pay off. At this point in the game, I had just scored seven points straight, so that makes this play even more of a bonehead play. This is the definition of just doing too much. Immediately I know it's my fault and it's just dumb. Like don't do this stuff. This whole play wouldn't have happened if I stayed connected to my man early. This is a result when you miss out on seemingly small details. Now moving to the fourth quarter, this is the definition of high level defensive basketball. It all starts with Tony's ball pressure. He's doing an incredible job here. Watch how I navigate two actions back to back. First I deny the down screen and then I get in the correct defensive positioning to bump the roller on the pick and roll and we get a steal. Great defense right here. Now here's a great example of just being confident and ready to produce when your numbers call. Big shot to put us up by one. Now we're getting to crunch time and I do a great job here getting underneath the screen and getting back in front of my man. Great one-on-one -on -one defense. Now pay attention to the angle of my feet here. They're slightly open which gives the ball handler the opportunity to attack. It was almost really good defense but that detail matters. Here we do a nice little ghost screen action. It creates some confusion. I probably should have shot this but instead I stayed calm and collected. Created a nice closeout opportunity for my man AB. He made a play. Offense is about exploiting advantages. Just an absolutely brutal game for us. We ended up dropping this one by two points. It was a game that we felt we played good enough to win. We were up one with a minute 30 left and just didn't make the plays we needed to make in order to get the win. And you know, now I'm back in Lisbon on a walk with my dog. And as a pro, you have to feel the losses, but you can't feel them too much because the season moves fast. And the only way to move is move forward. We got to see a little bit of the Greek culture. I'm having a lot of fun updating you guys and kind of keeping you guys in the loop with this overseas pro basketball season. If you like this stuff, make sure you like and subscribe for more and hopefully you guys enjoy and I'll catch up with you guys soon.